Hey guys, welcome to my first Python tutorial on YouTube. I wanted to start making Python tutorials because I'm actually learning the Python programming language myself and I wanted to get some experience making screencasts on YouTube and see if it would help other people learn the language also. So I'm starting at the very beginning so I'm actually about to download the interpreter. So I'll click on the newest version, 251. And let's see if there's an installer. Yep, for x86, so I'll just click on this one. So this is a very beginner-oriented tutorial, at least for now. Hopefully I'll have some more advanced ones later when I know what I'm doing a little better. open that up we'll install it for all users put it in python 25 <coughs> all right looks like it's done now that's all there is to it as far as installing Python. I can go to a command prompt now and I believe I can just do cd slash python25 oh, it's Windows so I use a backslash and I can just type in Python. This is the command line version. There's a GUI also that comes with the Windows installer at least called idle so I can start typing things like a equals 3, now a will give me 3, right? a plus 5 gives me 8, and so forth. Control Z to exit out of that. So that's sort of our first uh, look at Python. Now if I go into the start menu where it installed, we see that, yeah, idle, the Python GUI, is right here. And open it up. And it does bring up this window, which basically is a wrapper for this Python interpreter. I can type the same kinds of things in here. Just right here. Pretty nice. This new brand of, uh, I guess relatively new, um, interpreted languages that have interactive loops going on is really nice, I think. It, it allows you to do all your experimentation inside an in interactive session with the language rather than having to actually like write a you know write a test function inside your code and compile and run it and you know it's 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 much less awkward i think much more natural so let's play around a little bit more with this we have our like obligatory hello world which can use single or double quotes, sort of the, the norm these days with PHP and the like. Um, we can define a function. Let's define a function called sum. It's just really a really trivial example that takes two uh, x and y, two numbers. We'll do the colon, and now it knows that we've... Uh, we've created a definition, so it's going to indent for us automatically. Now in Python, indentation and style of code is actually part of the syntax. So if I didn't want to indent, that would actually change the meaning of the code. The uh, It would no longer be part of the definition. So I have to keep this indented, and luckily I like the way it looks, so that's okay. We're going to simply return in this function x plus y. If I hit enter a couple times, the interpreter realizes that I'm done defining my function. Now I can do things like sum 3 comma 5. You see that idle is giving me some autocomplete help, which is nice of it. And so there we go, our very first function. Pretty nice and pretty simple. Let's try something a little bit less trivial. Let's say the Fibonacci sequence. We'll say fib of n colon... Now we're going to want to see, we need a base case, so we'll say if n is less than or equal to 1, and put some spaces here for just to make it nice. We always do that colon that lets it know that 
the next thing is going to be indented and with respect to the thing that came before it. So this is now inside the if. If n is less than or equal to 1, we're going to return 1. Just return 1. Now it knows that we want to go back here. We say else. Oh no. I forgot my colon. Let's try that again. Fib of n if n less than or equal to 1, return 1, else, colon, there we go. Oh, sorry, got off the screen. By the way, I haven't seen a YouTube screencast where I could read the text. YouTube does this, you know, terrible but necessary thing where it shrinks your, your video down to a very low resolution people don't seem to accommodate that when they create screencasts though, so they just have pictures of their whole screen that become completely unreadable I'm using Camtasia Studio which has built-in a uh, feature called auto pan which is really nice wherever my mouse goes it'll automatically follow so I hope to see more of that kind of thing on YouTube since so far I can't see much of anything where screencasts are concerned. My vision is bad enough these days. So, okay, our Fibonacci, but I digress. So, in the case where n is, is greater than 1, we're going to return, and we want to do some recursion here. Fib, fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. And that's our whole definition. Let's try that. Fib of 0, fib of 1, fib of 3, let's say. 4? Yeah, seems to be working. Maybe we can print all of them swiftly. Let's see. For, for i in and then we can define a sequence. We'll say range, and here it's cool. We see that start is optional, stop is not, step is optional, so we can print out the first 10, let's say. We're going to say print fib of i. There it is, the first 10 Fibonacci's. And something kind of strange, but I guess probably good about Python, is we could have, if we wanted them all on one line, we could have said print fib i and then a comma. And then it still puts spaces there, so it's, I guess, trying to be sort of human for us and assume we don't want to smash all the characters together. So that's been, I guess, sort of a good initial look at Python. Thanks for watching.